It's been almost a year since I got my trusted iPhone 15 and genuinely this is my most used gadget every single day. Am I happy about this purchase? Absolutely. It's buttery smooth, takes amazing photos, love the connectivity between my Mac, AirPods and the iPhone has never let me down. I once went camping in a remote area and the SOS satellite messaging also came in very handy. But does that mean that it's perfect? Absolutely not. In fact, I've faced more problems on the iPhone 15 than my previous iPhone models to be honest. Here are 5 things which I hate about my iPhone 15 and wish Apple would address these in their next iPhone. First off, I'm not sure if it's just me noticing this, but the iPhone 15 scratches very easily, specifically on the display glass. I've had iPhones before, but iPhone 16 is the first phone I had to put a screen protector on. I generally take good care of my phone, I don't put it on my purse with keys, I don't toss it around, but yet this year the iPhone 15, I'm noticing way more scratches in my front display than before. I then went on the internet to find if I'm the only one with this issue with the iPhone 15 series. I started noticing these scratches like 3 months after buying the phone. I thought, well, it should have been me, I must have mishandled it, I might have kept the phone screen down. So for the next 3 months, I took extra care of my phone, did not put it in my purse, did not put the phone screen down, was extra careful while carrying my phone with anything else in my hand, assuming that this should take care of my issue. Keep in mind, I was not giving this level of protection to my older phones. Three months later, to my surprise, the scratches started getting more widespread. I was noticing new scratches every few days once. We started seeing scratches on the iPhone 15 Pro series as well. We are using our phones exactly like how we used to use our previous models, but we have not seen this level of scratches before. The only conclusion we could get to was there was something different about the iPhone 15 series front display that's causing this level of scratches. Eventually, I had to give up and put an additional screen guard on top just to stop the screen from getting further scratches and maintain some resale value. Here's an additional kicker on top. The back camera lens cover, which is supposed to be made of sapphire crystal, also has gotten so many scratches. I really don't understand what I could have done to get so many scratches on a sapphire crystal lens cover which is supposed to be even more scratch proof. I had to get a case too to protect my phone. Okay, let's move on. I had to rant about it because the scratches made my new iPhone look old so soon and I was pissed. Next, battery life. I have the iPhone 15 and not the larger plus or pro max model. So I knew the battery won't last as long as the larger models. But I've not been getting even a full single day use out of my iPhone 15 Pro. I can't travel without a portable charger. I start my day with full charge. By late afternoon, it's down to 20% usually. If I fast charge it to say 50%, assuming that should be good till the end of the day, no. By 8 or 8.30, it would be almost dead. This means I need to at least fully charge my phone twice every single day. And for the days when I have an extended FaceTime video call, like maybe an hour, by the end of the call, most certainly I will need to charge again. Is this the case with you as well? Let me know in the comments below about your experience. I've been very unhappy about the iPhone 15 Pro's battery life. I like small phones, they fit better in my hand, in my pocket, and even to type on. But just for the battery life, I'm considering a larger phone the next time. It's so annoying to sit next to the wall charger twice a day. Third, this is something that has gotten better with the software updates, but not completely. Heating issues. When the iPhone 15 came out last year, there were multiple complaints of heating issues with new chip, especially while using certain apps like Instagram. Apple fixed this with the new software update. And it did fix many of those issues, but once in a while, I still see phone heating up. When I use Lightroom on my phone, when I have a WhatsApp call for over 15 to 20 minutes, when I record videos for over 20 minutes, all these times, I still notice significant heating at the back of my phone. It's not burning hot or anything, but it's definitely not a normal usage. Sometimes when I charge phone wireless, I notice a lot of heat and I get a warning saying it cannot charge due to high temperature. I'm worried about the frequent heating because such heat will definitely degrade my battery capacity, which is already pretty bad. Within a year, I might have to charge like thrice or more even every single day. And then Apple will start throttling with my phone performance saying it's protecting my phone experience. You see, the problems keep adding up. With iOS 18, with all the half-baked AI features, I'm assuming it's gonna get even worse. Speaking of AI features, 
features that's my third problem lack of ai features on the 15 model other flagships like google pixel samsung galaxy s24 series have smart ai features integrated for more than a year now and it can go circle to search ai photo editing and a lot more ai features unfortunately iphones haven't gotten them yet i was so excited to hear about apple intelligence that finally iphones are getting photo cleanup better siri and ai features but to my big disappointment those features coming to the ios 18 are not coming to the iphone 15 model they are only coming to the iphone 15 pro models and later Apple may also say that it's because of hardware limitations required for on-device processing, but I believe it's plainly a way for Apple to make its customers upgrade to newer iPhone model this year. I would have hoped for at least some subset of AI features coming to the iPhone 15 series, but nothing. Not a big disappointment for sure. Okay, finally, the last one, price, or in other words, value for money. The iPhone 15 is not cheap, it costs $800 and the iPhone 15 is not something that gets discounts in a few months. Even with just 10 days of iPhone 16 release, they will still retail for full $800. But here's where I have an issue. For $800, Apple won't give features which are present in a $200 phones. This CMF phone starts from $200 and it has 120Hz display screen and a 128GB starting storage. An $800 iPhone 15 also starts with 128 gigs and comes with a worst 60Hz screen. Is the technology expensive? Absolutely not. Just another way for Apple to make customers to buy their expensive Pro phones. Samsung at around the same price offers the Samsung S24 series at 256GB storage. Samsung phones, either their S24 or S24 Ultra, all models offer higher refresh rate display and at least a cheaper upgrade to larger storage. Apple, on top of giving 60Hz display, charges $100 for another 128GB. This is not fair. Based on leaks and rumors, I know that even the iPhone 16 is not getting a high refresh rate display this year. So more disappointments. What are your thoughts? Comment down below. I would be interested to know. I still love my iPhone 15. I think the processor, the apps, the cameras are all top notch. These five things have been a pain for sure in the last one year. I hope these get fixed to some extent this year. We'll share an updated video once the iPhone 16 is released. So subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that. I'll see you all in the next one. This is Anjana. Bye-bye. Yeah.